it opened up my eyes and I'm very cautious and worried that where are they going to strike next. Residents are on edge after learning of another small town robbery. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hitterdahl, Minnesota is looking for this man, believed to be in his mid-30s. They also have this photo of what they say is a dark getaway car. The man held a long gun and demanded money from the State Bank of Lake Park in Hitterdahl. Hitterdahl is about a 40-minute drive northeast from Fargo-Moorhead. Valley News Team's Krista Baim visited another small town in Minnesota that knows all too well the uneasy feeling. People weren't coming in and out like they do now being on the interstate. Things have changed for Marilyn Danielson, who has lived in Rothsay for nearly 50 years. It's faster paced now, and the talk of the town continues to focus on an armed robbery at their local bank three weeks ago, just a block up where Marilyn works. I had just opened up the store and I thought of locking the doors. I had no clue. We keep asking, have they found them yet? Officers are still searching for the man in these surveillance photos. And now, Rothsay has another reason to be on high alert. A second armed robbery, just 40 miles north in Hitterdahl. It makes you wonder. Yeah. Just don't feel safe. Authorities have not tied the two together, but know that small towns are far more vulnerable to crimes like these. If you have a, whether an unincorporated town that doesn't have a police department and, you were, and the response time is a lot more uh, in a rural setting, um, that's the situation that we deal with. They don't think we're equipped to handle this kind of thing. They can get by with it. Less people to see them. Which is why surveillance video is so important. An advantage in Roth say, not so much in Hitterdahl. It didn't do much good. These images are posing even more of a challenge for this town of 200. To try and find the man who authorities say had this plan. It appeared that he, he knew the, um, the layout of the bank. An aim at smaller towns. Many say they hope doesn't start a trend. We just need to take extra precautions and be more aware of our surroundings. In Rothsay, Krista Baim, Valley News Live. If you know or saw anything regarding either robbery, you're asked to please call the Clay or Wilkin County Sheriff's offices. An 18-year-old is facing a felony porn charge after she sent a nude picture of another teen around to other students. Detroit Lakes Police say in October, Stephanie Johnson Jonathan knowingly forwarded it to two others because she was mad at the 16-year-old in the picture. Detroit Lakes Police Chief reminds people to at any nude pictures of anyone under 18 is illegal to possess or forward on. You know, your best bet is not automatically a felony just to receive that we can't control what we receive um, but what gets people into trouble is when they start sharing those pictures or if they keep it on their phone or their computer and uh, you know so the best thing to do would be to delete it the chief adds if your child receives these pictures they should notify police and delete it right away the maximum sentence in minnesota for disseminating pornographic work is jail time of seven years or a ten thousand dollar fine a man wanted by police in Fargo and Moorhead since Friday is now behind bars. Josh Ashenko is facing several charges, including shoplifting, failure to appear, theft of a motor vehicle, and violation of the 24-7 program. Moorhead police say the Metro Street Crime Unit had been working to find Ashenko for several days. Health officials in Dallas, Texas, say they have identified a case of Zika virus that they say was transmitted through sexual contact. Mosquitoes are the main transmitters of the Zika virus, though there have been a few cases where sexual transmission was suspected. Now, Dallas County Health and Human Services are reporting a patient who acquired the virus via sexual contact. The type of mosquitoes that carry Zika are able to reach parts of Texas, but local health officials say they have not seen any evidence of mosquitoes carrying the virus. Most infected people won't have any symptoms, but the experts are concerned about a potential link between Zika and a rise in birth defects in parts of Latin America. A Fargo woman called our whistleblower hotline, and in just two weeks, her problem was resolved. We brought you the story of Marie Meyer in mid-January. She was trying to get on the smoking cessation medication Chantix. However, North Dakota Medicaid was holding up the process. 
After our story aired, Meyer says those in charge became very cooperative with her, and today she began taking Chantix. You guys, you guys go out of your way to see what's happening, find out why it's happening, and try to make some changes. Where other stations, they, they look at you like, yeah, so it's your problem, deal with it. Meyer says this situation has changed her outlook on life. She has started a blog and plans to help people who, like her, might find themselves in difficult situations. Meyer first contacted us through our whistleblower hotline. And if you need help uncovering an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. We want to clarify a story we aired last night. It mentioned bird flu being confirmed at a western Minnesota turkey farm. Now, the information in that story was outdated. We did some checking on the source and traced it to a press release issued yesterday in error from an NDSU Ag Extension agent out of Montreal County in western North Dakota. We apologize for any confusion it might have created. It's Tuesday, so that means it's time for a restaurant report card. And this week, Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker takes us to four Moorhead businesses who had all critical violations. Four establishments in Moorhead racked up a combined 12 critical violations for this week's restaurant report card. The first is Days In, which received seven critical violations, three dating back to last September, including not being able to clean dishes properly due to maintenance issues. We reached out to Days In, but did not hear back from them. Burger Time in Moorhead only had one critical violation, which was not maintaining an employee health log. Geo's Grill and Bar had two critical violations, dealing with not dating food properly and not cleaning their ice machine. The only establishment to get back to us was Crack Cafe in Delhi. They had two critical violations. The person in charge at the time of the inspection didn't know proper food temperatures, and they had yogurt, roast beef, tuna, and chicken salad sandwiches, all in a display case that wasn't keeping the food cool enough. We have implemented procedures to make sure that our employees are constantly checking temperatures on equipment to make sure that when malfunctions do happen that we can solve them before a health inspector comes in rather than he's the one that finds them out. Sand says within the next week, three people will be certified food managers and have knowledge of proper food temperatures. For Restaurant Report Card, I'm Cornelius Hawker. There was no restaurant in the latest inspections that qualified for our Clean Plate Award. To see other restaurant report cards, go to our website at valleynewslive.com. A leader in U.S. health insurance says he has serious concerns about Obamacare. That's according to a Bloomberg Business article. Mark Bertolini is the CEO of Aetna, which is the third largest U.S. health insurer. Bertolini says he's concerned about Obamacare's sustainability, and he's not the only one. Bloomberg Business reports other large U.S. health insurers are struggling to make a profit. According to the article, United Health recently announced it will have about $1 billion in losses on Obamacare plans and may quit the program in 2017. Minnesota's governor says he'll no longer push for a special legislative session. Mark Dayton and fellow Democrats wanted a special session to extend unemployment benefits for miners on the Iron Range and away proposals to bring Minnesota in compliance with a federal driver's license law and tackling racial economic disparities. Republicans have argued the issues can wait until the legislature's scheduled return in March. The Minnesota State Patrol reports hundreds of crashes statewide as a winter storm pushed across the state. Troopers have reported over 300 crashes across Minnesota. In addition to that, there were also hundreds of spin-outs. Cities like Minneapolis, St. Paul and Mankato declared snow emergencies, causing many schools to close their doors. And Hutch is reporting that the Twin Cities has received from four inches to a foot of snow. 